So let's see if you have the geometry knowledge to solve this problem. And the question is, we want to find the radius of this circle. And we have this given information. We're told that this chord right here, or this line segment, uh, XZ, is the diameter of the circle. And then, of course, we have some other information right here. This is a chord. And of course, we have a triangle here, but this is a chord in a circle. This has a length of 12. And this is another chord, it has a length of seven. And obviously this is forming a triangle. Now, if you don't know what a chord is, I'll explain that in the video, but let's see how well you understand geometry. Now, you're going to need a formula, or maybe you know the formula. So if you feel like you want to stop this video and research this a little bit to uh, look up your geometry formulas, that's perfectly fine. And feel free to use a calculator as well. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then I'll show you exactly how easy it is to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now when we're looking at this, uh, clearly we have a triangle here, and we know that this is the diameter, but we're trying to find the radius. Now, if you look at this triangle, we're like, boy, if I'm trying to find the radius, it would be nice if we knew this length right here, and we have a triangle, and it would just be awesome if this was a right triangle, but I'm not indicating that this is a right triangle. Now, if this was or is a right triangle, what could we use to answer this question? Now, if the problem, again, let me just kind of erase this. If I put this in uh, right here in this diagram and I say this is a right triangle, well, then this becomes a super easy problem because, again, we can easily find this length. Now, how could we do that? Well, we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. We can get this side right here divided by two and voila, we have the radius. But I do not know whether in fact this is a right triangle. So we cannot make that assumption. So if you got this right by just looking at this triangle and just kind of guessing, hey, I think this might be right and you just went and did this work, that is great. However, if you can't back up your justification that this is a right angle, well, you're kind of guessing, but you know, indeed it was a good guess, but we need to have justification about what's going on here. So the topic is inscribed angles. Now an angle is inscribed in a circle uh, if it looks like this. Basically the angle is being formed at the edge of the circle and line segments in circles like this are called chords. Okay, so that is a uh, what we call a chord. And the longest chord in a circle is the diameter. Okay, so here again, uh, this is a chord. It's a line segment that's going from one edge of the circle to the other, but I can have all kinds of one. I can have some nice small ones like this. So the largest chord you can have in a circle is called the diameter. Now, of course, I could draw the diameter this way, or I could draw the diameter this way, or I could draw the diameter this way. It doesn't make a difference. But um, anyways, by definition, that's what a chord is, and that's what the diameter is. It's the largest chord. Now, here is an um, inscribed angle. Now, notice here, here is the angle. It's 50 degrees, and I'm saying that this is an arc of 100 degrees. So if you have an inscribed angle of 50 degrees and the arc it forms, this angle forms is 100 degrees, what do you think the formula would be for an inscribed angle given uh, the arc it forms? What do you think the formula could be? Well, hopefully it looks kind of obvious, but uh, let's go ahead and formalize it. Okay, so here it is. So let's just put some um, points here. So let's call this point A, point B, and point C on uh, the circle. And here is our inscribed angle. And here is the formula that you need to know. It looks very fancy, but it's pretty straightforward stuff. It says the measure of angle, this is right here. Let me just go and highlight this. This is the measure of angle ABC. 
So where's A, B, C? This is point A, B, and C. So we're talking about this angle right here. The measure of angle A, B, C is equal to one half the measure of the uh, arc um, A, C. Okay, so here is the arc formed by the uh, two sides here, these two cords. So this is the, uh, the arc being formed by the angle. So the actual angle is simply one half the value of the arc. And this is going to be critical for us because once we understand this, then uh, we'll be able to easily uh, solve this problem. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our diagram now that we have this uh, understanding of inscribed angles. Now, when you have a diameter that goes through a circle, let me just kind of draw a, a circle right here. If I draw, if I, if, let's say we kind of cut this circle in half, okay? Well, if I cut the circle in half, the cord is not going to be like right there, right? It's not going to be a small cord like this and this. It's going to be the biggest cord uh, in the circle, right? So if I cut the circle in half, i.e., this is a semicircle and this is a semicircle, the line or the cord that does that is, in fact, the diameter. So the diameter of a circle actually kind of splits a circle into two semicircles. Now, how many degrees are there in a circle? Well, hopefully you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know the answer. It's 360 degrees, and I would say that is absolutely correct. So a semicircle has how many degrees? Okay, and we're talking about the arc. So the arc here is 180 degrees. So if we look very carefully, right here, this cord and this cord, this is an inscribed angle within this circle. So look at the arc that's being formed by this inscribed uh, angle. It's 180 degrees. So what is this angle? It's going to be one half the measure of the arc. And of course, that would be one half of 180 degrees, which would be 90 degrees. And there we go. We uh, proved that, in fact, this is a right triangle. Okay, so this is very awesome because now we get to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the rest of this problem. Again, you need to be able to have, um, you know, justification uh, in terms of, you know, if something looks like a right angle or something looks, you know, parallel, for example, in a geometry problem, you have to be able to justify it. You just can't go by, you know, it kind of looks like a right angle. So I'm just going to assume that it is. Now, what I just told you right here is uh, kind of, uh, backed up by a couple different theorems that you'll learn uh, in uh, geometry. Now, when you study geometry, you literally learn hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things called theorems, postulates, corollaries. And, you know, it, it's uh, this is why it's so critical that you take notes. You do not try to memorize all this stuff. It's just too much information. So, you know, I don't expect you to uh, know, you know, the formula or remember this stuff. Uh, you know, in your in your brain. If you did, if you actually, uh, you know, could recall this, that is fantastic. But uh, again, that's why I said, hey, go ahead and look this up. But in order to look this up, you need to have at least recognize that we're dealing with an inscribed angle within a circle. And then you could pull up all the formulas for an inscribed angle. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So now we know that this is a right angle because this is 180 degrees. This is an inscribed angle, okay? So the inscribed angle, the arc form is 180 degrees, so this is 90. Uh, therefore, this is a right triangle, so that's awesome. So we get to use the Pythagorean theorem which of course only applies to uh, right triangles. Okay, so the longest side here is our C side. That's always the hypotenuse. Uh, we'll just kind of uh, assign a variable X here. So this could be A, this could be, doesn't make, uh, uh, this side could be A, this could be B, doesn't make a difference. So let's go ahead and plug in this information. So A squared, 
will be 12 squared plus b squared will be uh, uh, 7 squared is equal to, we'll call the diameter x or x squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure this out. Again, we're going to solve for x. That will be the diameter of this circle. What we want, though, is the radius, which, of course, is one half of the diameter. So let's go ahead and do the math here. So 12 squared is 144 plus 7 squared is 49 is equal to x squared. 44 plus 49 is 193 is equal to x squared. We have a lovely little quadratic equation here. So to solve for x, all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 193, so x will be uh, approximately equal to positive negative square root of 193. We never use the negative values because we're talking about positive distance here on this circle. So in our calculator, we take the square root of 193 and we get approximately 13.89. Okay, so remember though, that is the diameter. We want the radius, and the radius is going to be one half the diameter. So all we have to do is take this lovely number and divide it by two. So 13.89 divided by two gets, uh, gets us to about 6.94. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense. Again, you know, in geometry, there is a ton of formulas. A lot of this stuff looks kind of scary. Uh, it's not that scary. What's actually scary is managing all this information, okay? So, you know, you could do this stuff, uh, you know, I mean, in my personal opinion, a lot of geometry, not all of geometry, but a lot of geometry is not that difficult, okay? What's difficult is just managing all the theorems, all the postulates, all the formulas, and literally... Uh, this could number in like the hundreds, okay? So that's why you must be an outstanding, uh, excellent note taker. Now, let me just go ahead and make a couple quick uh, comments here. If you are not taking great math notes and you want to learn math, well, you, you, you're you going to have a tough time, okay? Now, if, uh, you should see underneath this video somewhere um, something called power notes. So I offer three levels of power notes, um, algebra, geometry, and then there's one like algebra 2 trigonometry. You'll see them underneath uh, this video. Hopefully you'll see in some place. But uh, if you don't have uh, geometry notes and need geometry notes, I have a full set of comprehensive notes for all those different math subjects. So you can check those out. But if you take any one of my full courses, again, you'll uh, find the links uh, in the description. All my courses uh, come with very, very comprehensive notes. So you can have those included if you want to take it a step further. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.